hundred years behind bars. For 10 months, you acted as a terrorist in our community. I'm an innocent man. I do not commit these crimes. Crimes. Mark Goudeau was a serial killer who committed a series of murders and sexual assaults in Phoenix, Arizona between 2005 and 2006. Dubbed the baseline killer by the media, Goudeau's crimes were characterized by the brutality and the randomness of his attacks. In 2005, the baseline killer murders began occurring in the Phoenix area. Victims were often targeted while they were out running errands or doing other everyday activities. The killer would approach his victims from behind, attack them with a weapon, the police and community were terrified as the number of victims continued to climb. A task force was formed to try to catch the killer. The victims of Godot's crimes were diverse in terms of age, race, and gender. Mark Godot is believed to have committed a series of heinous crimes, including nine counts first-degree murder, 15 sexual assaults, 11 counts of kidnapping, and several armed robberies. The murders were particularly brutal, with the killer often shooting the victims in the head and showing no apparent motive. Godot was known to use disguises such as Halloween masks and to impersonate homeless people or drug addicts in order to to evade detection. The crimes were characterized by their brutality and left the community in fear and terror. August 6, 2005, Ginny S., Sarah Yu, and Jesus F. On the evening of August 6, 2005, Mark Godot approached Ginny, Sarah, and Jesus, all minors at the time, armed with a silver handgun. He claimed he had just robbed a bank and asked for directions, saying he was waiting for a buddy to give him a ride. Godot then forced the three minors at gunpoint to go to a secluded area behind a church. There, he sexually assaulted Ginny and Sarah and used a towel to wipe them off before leaving the scene. September September 8, 2005, Georgia Thompson. Georgia Thompson was found dead in the parking lot of her apartment complex with a gunshot wound to the head. A witness testified that they heard a woman scream, leave me alone, followed by a gunshot, and another witness reported hearing a woman scream on the night in question. September 28, 2005, while working at a takeout window of a restaurant, Melissa S.C., Azelda H., and Martha H. were confronted by Godot, who pointed a gun at them and demanded money. But Godot reached into the window and grabbed Melissa's purse before leaving the scene. Moments after robbing the takeout window, Godot approached Margie M. and her 12-year-old daughter, Bianca M., who were sitting in a car parked nearby. He pointed a gun behind her and got into the car and ordered her and Bianca not to look at him. Godot then demanded that Margie start driving and telling them that his buddy had left him behind. During the drive, he demanded $20 from Margie and sexually assaulted Bianca. Eventually, Godot directed Margie to pull over behind a store where he ordered both of them to get undressed. He then ordered Margie outside the car and sexually assaulted her. After the attack, Godot told Margie to drive back to the area near where he had first entered the car, and once there, he demanded more money. Margie gave her coin purse to him before leaving. Godot used the victim's clothing to wipe down areas of the car that he had touched. November 3rd, 2005, Godot entered a store where Teresa G was working as a clerk and pointed a silver handgun at her head. Head. He demanded money from her. Shortly after robbing the store where Teresa G worked, Godot approached Annie P in a parking lot across from the store and pointed a silver handgun at her. He demanded that she give him a ride, and once in the car, he sat in the front passenger seat and ordered Annie to drive up and down various streets. During the drive, Godot told Annie that he had just robbed a store and that his buddy had left him. He then ordered her to pull into a quiet neighborhood where he demanded that she undress and sexually assaulted her. After the attack, Godot ordered Annie to spit on her hand and rub it on the areas of her body that he had touched. He then told her to drive back to an area near the store where he had first encountered her, took her purse and cash, and left the scene. November 7, 2005. Alfredo L. was standing in his restaurant with two employees. When Godot entered, brandishing a silver handgun, Godot demanded money from Alfredo, who gave him money from the cash register. Godot then robbed a customer and took his wallet. December 12, 2005. Hidoro was getting ready to leave work when he heard a series of loud bangs coming from an alley behind his building. Curiosity getting the better of him, Peter cautiously stepped into the alley to investigate. What he saw there would haunt him for the rest of his life. Peter saw a man holding a handgun pointed at a motionless figure on the ground. Godot turned and pointed the gun at Peter, heard the gun click, and he ran back inside and locked the door. When police arrived, they found the body of Tina Washington laying in the alley, her head brutally shot at close range. February 20, 2006. Romilia Vargas and Myrna Roman were brutally murdered in Vargas' food truck. When the police arrived at the scene, they found the two women lying side by side on the floor of the truck, each with a gunshot wound to the head. As detectives began their investigation, they noticed that Vargas's purse and driver's license were missing from the scene. As the days passed after these crimes, the detectives worked tirelessly to track down leads and gather evidence. They interviewed witnesses and scoured the area for any clues that might help them identify the killer. And finally, after months of hard work, they got their break. They discovered that all the shell casings found at the crime scenes were from the same gun. In an effort to bring the perpetrator to justice, the Phoenix police dedicated thousands of hours to patrolling and following up on hundreds of tips. The community was on edge, 
as the random and violent nature of the crimes left residents feeling alarmed and vulnerable. In response, the police held community meetings to distribute a sketch of the suspect based on descriptions provided by surviving victims. The sketch was widely circulated on posters and billboards throughout the city. A reward of $100,000 was offered for information leading to an arrest. Despite the efforts of police, it took over a year to develop a viable suspect in the case. Margot Doe was on community supervision. He was on parole with the Arizona Department of Corrections. In August 2006, parole officers provided information to the Phoenix Police Department, suggesting that Godot matched the sketch of the baseline killer. Parole officers searched Godot's residence and found a ski mask and a realistic toy handgun. Police used this information to obtain a search warrant for Godot's residence and found additional items that linked him to the crimes committed by the baseline killer. DNA evidence found at the crime scene led them to Mark Godot, a serial killer who had been preying on the Phoenix area for years. Godot was arrested and accused of sexually assaulting two sisters. As well as a series of other brutal crimes, the case of Vargas and Roman was a tragic reminder of the devastating impact that violent crime can have on a community. During the trial, the two sisters testified that Godot had suddenly approached them with a gun in his hand and forced them into nearby bushes. Prosecutors stated that Godot had warned the women not to look at his face during the assault and had rubbed dirt on one of the women to remove saliva traces. The testimony of the two sisters provided chilling details of the fear they had experienced during the attack. Despite the overwhelming evidence against him, Godot's wife, Wendy Carr, maintained his innocence and, and claimed that police had arrested the wrong man. Uh, he's the baseline killer scapegoat. He is the person that was just black enough to be arrested. He's too old. He claimed that Godot had been framed by the Phoenix police who were desperate for a suspect in the case. Despite these claims, Godot was eventually found guilty of the crime. The defendant should be sentenced to death, to death, to death. Prior to his conviction for the crimes, Godot had a criminal history that included a 13-year prison sentence for aggravated assault and armed robbery. According to the Arizona prison officials, Godot's previous conviction involved beating a woman's head with a barbell, headed down to a charge of aggravated assault, and his previous criminal history was likely considered when he was eventually sentenced to life in prison for the crimes committed as the baseline killer. December 7, 2006, three months after Godot's arrest, the Phoenix police announced that we're confident he was responsible for all of the murders. We're confident that he was responsible for the full series of murders, rapes, and robberies that had terrorized the city for 13 months. In total, Godot is believed to have committed nine murders, one more than originally attributed to the baseline killer. The police stated that ballistics, DNA, and circumstantial evidence all pointed to Godot as the perpetrator. During the trial, a forensic specialist with the Department of Public Safety testified the male DNA found on the left breast of one of the victims was the match of Godot, and that it was 360 trillion times more likely that the DNA collected from the crime scene came from him rather than an unrelated black male. The evidence against Godot was strong. Police recommended that persecutors charge Godot with 74 crimes, including nine counts of first degree murder, five counts of sexual assault, three counts of attempted sexual assault, 10 counts of kidnapping, 12 counts of armed robbery, four counts of attempted armed robbery, 13 counts of aggravated assault, and three counts of indecent exposure. On October 31st, 2011, Godot was found guilty of a total of 67 felony counts, including all of the murders attributed to the baseline killer. On November 30th, 2011, Godot was sentenced to death nine times for the murders. The defendant should be sentenced to death, to death, to death. Well, that was repeated nine times for each of the baseline killings. In total, Godot received a sentence of 1,634 years in prison. There was a second possible suspect at one point, Terry Wayne Smith. In June 2009, a leaked police report revealed that another suspect had been questioned in connection with the murder of Romilia Vargas and Myrna Roman. Smith, a black male who matched the description of the baseline killer, had a long history of violent crime in both California and Arizona. Smith had been released from prison shortly before the baseline killer attacks began. He is currently serving a four-year prison sentence for holding his family at gunpoint, police spokesman stated that Smith had been properly questioned and dismissed as a suspect, and that he was in jail at the time of one of the murders. In October 2015, Godot appealed his non-death sentences to the Arizona Supreme Court, with his attorney arguing that he should have been tried separately for each of the murders in some of the other accounts. In June of 2016, the Arizona Supreme Court upheld the nine death sentences and more than 60 other felony convictions against Godot. Despite his appeals, Godot remains in prison, serving out his lengthy sentence for the crimes he was convicted of committing as the baseline killer.